Hi everyone and welcome. We're down here in my wormery and yes, I'm speaking to you through the impellers of this fan right here. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I always got a kick out of hearing my voice through the fan. Kind of that weird sound that it makes, sort of uh, that sort of vibrating sound that it makes as your uh, as your voice cuts through the blades. I'm not even sure if it really sounded that way or not. This is a pretty small fan. That usually works better on a larger fan, but I digress. The reason we're here is because we're checking in on my worm bins. And if you're a regular here, you'll notice that this is a little bit out of sorts for me. I usually don't leave my bins exposed to the air this way. I usually have some form of coverings, but a lot of people have been suggesting that uh, placing a fan and moving air across the top of my bins would uh, would help in the drying process and a lot of my bins have just gotten overly damp over the past couple weeks when it's starting to get really humid here in the summer so I'm attempting to dry some of my bins out but those aren't the bins that we're interested in the bins that we're interested in today are actually the ones that do currently still have coverings and those are the night crawlers the night crawlers uh, over here in the vermi bag mini I've got European night crawlers and down here in the corner in the green tub I've got African night crawlers. It's been a week since these two bins were last fed. And I don't even think that was much of a feeding. So I'm pretty sure that they're probably due for some food today. So I'm just going to check in on these really quick. Give them a quick feeding. My thought was that we might see a couple worms in the process. So why not film it? I'm pretty confident we'll see some worms. <laughs> Alright, let's get to work. We'll begin here in the vermi bag mini with the European night crawlers. And the one thing we've been dealing with in this container for a while now is the presence of flying insects. And you can see some of them zipping around here. And a lot of them just sort of, I guess, come to the end of their life and drop onto this piece of cardboard. And down here on the uh, next piece of cardboard that rests on top of the plastic is material that's known as diatomaceous earth. It's a very, very fine powder. It's actually fossilized microbial life that used to live in the ocean and fell to the bottom or something like that. I, I don't know the whole story, but it's super, super jagged if you're looking at it through a microscope. So while it won't hurt us as humans or it won't hurt the worms either, if you're a tiny insect, those jagged little shards of fossilized material get in between the exoskeleton of your body and ultimately result in little lacerations and and in time it should theoretically knock out an insect killing it basically and um, that's kind of what I'm after but it doesn't seem like it's doing much of a much of a job let's bring the camera in a little bit closer so we can better see what we're doing See here we rested a fair bit of leafy matter across the top. A number of worms have come up to hang out on the top surface where the moisture collecting on that piece of plastic is condensing and dropping down. This thick layer of leafy matter was placed on top as something that I had hoped to uh, sort of hold down or mask the scent of the food that they received most recently so that it becomes less of a draw for the flying insects. And I'm prepared to put even more leafy matter on top. And I've also got coffee which is another thing that helps with the suppression of scent and odor. We've been periodically checking into these bits of mango seed to see how they're progressing by having hacked this mango seed into three individual pieces it gave the worms immediate access to the inside of it. So they're making some pretty good progress on it. They're making pretty good progress on these corn bits too. It's not quite as drastic a measure was taken with this mango pit but I believe on this one I had just punctured it using my knife, put a few holes in here to allow for intrusion of worms and whatnot. You can see from this mango seed here, 
which actually had that little chunk of it hacked off this side and the other piece of it hacked off that side that um, with the even greater access provided to the worms they're able to make even quicker work of breaking it down although last time we checked in I thought that this thing had a fair number of worms on it for whatever reason right now it doesn't and everything we've stumbled on so far mango seeds corn those are all items that relatively break down slowly you know relative to other types of food that they sometimes receive so I don't really gauge progress of how we're doing based on those items I do expect them to be there on a regular basis each time we check in so as we work our way down we start finding some stuff from the previous feeding this is a mac half of an uh, avocado that they'd received you can see that they're working it down quite nicely still a little bit left in there for them to finish off but looks like they've taken a pretty good bite out of it I can't remember what other types of foods were placed in here last time I guess if we stumble on any of it we'll know but if we don't then we'll also know that they've pretty much done away with it and I believe that that's the case if memory serves me correctly the feedings in these bins was not very substantial so uh, so that's the uh, that's the other reason I wasn't really expecting to find too much in here so I would say that of the last feeding this half of an avocado is pretty much all that remains and the shell might take some time but I bet you by the next time I come in here there won't be any more of that that meaty part of the avocado remaining and you know naturally these slow bits of food will probably also take some time to break down so we're just going to drop in a little portion of food get it covered up again in the hopes that it doesn't continue to attract insects and uh, we'll let these little guys get back to work so I have here in my hands a pretty generous handful of food we've been using kind of a two handful approach to dosing or portioning the food so I'll throw in what amounts to one generous handful banana peel piece of an apple stem of some large something or another maybe cauliflower and that's half of a tomato Oops, the other handful is just going to be tiny stuff from the bottom of the bag so that they get a mix of big and small stuff here's what I dropped earlier a grape so here's some leaves and we'll put more leaves on top just to complement what was already on there We'll also return all these older slow composting food items down into the feeding zone. And the coffee that I have is plentiful today. I think last time I didn't really have too much on hand, but today I've got enough to be generous. But I don't want to go crazy, so I think that's enough right there. I'm also going to skip putting any grit in today because the grit um, that I use, which is pulverized eggshell, I've got plenty on hand, but I do believe that I did add grit during the last couple feedings. And it's not a thing that you need to add all the time. I mean, it's a good thing to add occasionally, but it's not terribly important to always include it in your feedings. So today I'm just going to skip. Maybe we'll get back to giving them grit again next go around. I really like looking at how things look on the edge. Because in the winter, when the air was very, very dry, to me it seemed like the material on the outer edge had been really losing its moisture very rapidly, and I, I thought it might have been attestable to the breathability of the container. And maybe that the moisture was being lost through the walls of the bag but I can't say for certain because the material even right on the edge right against the edge of the wall is holding up really nicely and is retaining moisture perfectly it's a little more damp over here maybe there's a chunk of food or something residual food over there but I like to see how the material on the edge of this bin looks and the fact that it's clearly populated with worms all the way out to the edge right up against the edge for, for that matter I believe um, 
is proof positive that the material is plenty damp and comfortable for the worms, so they're digging it. All right. Just gonna check around here, make sure I didn't unearth any major large chunks of food. Make sure that it's under the surface. But before we pack up here, why don't we give them a little bit more leafy matter as a top dressing. Okay, so a couple handfuls to do. So I'm not really concerned, I guess, about the moisture in this bin. The main reason I've been removing these plastic coverings off of most of my bins was because it did seem like the material in a lot of my bins was getting very damp, and that was the reason the fan was running, too on them to try to blow off any sort of moisture. Oops. So I think we're just going to go ahead and restore things the way we found them for the most part. And maybe it is the breathability of the bag that's allowing for any sort of excess moisture to simply exit the bin, keeping things nice and cozy in here. But I can't say for sure. One thing that is for sure is the fact that it's super humid still. Even down here in my wormery. So I'm just glad that this bin is doing pretty nicely from a moisture perspective and not getting overly damp. I just wish these little flying insects would go away already. Okay, things are looking good here. On to the African night crawlers. The African night crawlers in this container are rapidly running out of space. Each time this bin gets fed, the level rises slightly. And at some point, I'll probably need to relocate these guys into a slightly larger container. But for now, I think we're still in good shape, so we'll just give them another feeding. As I remember, the previous feeding was a little bit small. I'm not sure, but it's possible that they may have actually gone through what they received last time, or a pretty good portion of it. And even if they didn't, I definitely plan to feed. I always like to sort of stack on the next feeding regardless of whether or not I'm finding remnants of the previous feeding or feedings. Unless of course there's just a huge amount there. But I know that the food that they're getting is not yet in a rotten state or in a decomposing state so it does take time for it to get infiltrated by the microscopic life forms in the bin and start to break down so that the worms can eventually start taking advantage of it too. So that's one of the main reasons I feel like putting the food in sort of a uh, an advanced measure so that even if they can't start into it right away at least it has a chance to begin the breakdown process so that the worms can eventually get at it too some of these items like we saw in the other bin are uh, corn this piece is um, getting burrowed out of the middle wow if I touch it it almost feels like it wants to fall apart so I don't know how much longer we're going to continue to see it as an ear of corn or a corn cob. It is possible that they'll do away with it pretty soon. This looks like it's the half of a, a mango seed. Or maybe it's a whole mango seed. It's just so flat and thin. It doesn't seem like a whole mango seed because the inside of it is where the actual seed is. This is more of like a husk. Then again, maybe they've gone in there and cleared it out. <laughs> I wasn't sure up until now, but now that I was able to actually stick my thumb in there and separate the two halves, I can see for sure that it is the outer husk of a, um, a mango seed. But for whatever reason, little or no seed is in there. This is one little thing in here, and that might just be a tiny seed that just didn't grow much? I don't know. I just don't remember what kind of state it was in when it was originally placed in here. Here we have another corn cob, also getting broken down. Quite seriously broken down. Not much left. As you can see, we've removed a fair number of pretty good sized chunks of food. But like I mentioned earlier, corn cobs, mango seeds, those are all items that take forever to break down. And they'll continue breaking them down, but um, I always like to have kind of that next wave of food in here already gradually breaking down. 
This actually looks like it might be a residual piece of food that they might have gotten last time. See the stem and the shape of it. It looks like it's an apple or part of an apple. Or maybe a pear. It's hard to say. Whatever it was, it's definitely making some pretty good progress. And you know, there's a lot of dampness down here too. It's making me wonder if it might make good sense for this bin to remain uncovered also. Maybe it'll catch a little bit of the fan that's aiming at the shelf and also help with the drying off of the material a little bit. So yeah, I think I'm going to be leaving that piece of paper off that we had this covered with. Because I think this would benefit from a little drying action too. Alright, let's give them their food. A little bit of dry bedding. Just the nice thing about the dry bedding is that it's going to absorb a little bit of the moisture in the bin. Probably not a great deal, but it can't hurt, that's for sure. And once again, I've taken a number of very similar food bits to what we gave the other bin. Not sure what that is. Is that a banana peel? No, maybe it's mango. Yeah, I think that's the peelings of a mango skin. This is lettuce. This might be cauliflower. This is obviously an apple bit with something stuck to it, which I don't recognize. And this is that other half of the... Uh, tomato that was placed into the other bin. And here too, like we did in the other bin, we'll complement the large chunks of food with a handful of smaller bits from the bottom of my bag. Here it looks like we've got some broccoli bits and some shavings of cucumber. So it looks like a pretty nice portion. I'm going to drop in a little bit of coffee. Seems like a pretty good amount. I don't want to go overboard because I do have a limited amount of space in here. So I've still got to put all these older bits of food back down where they came from. And here too I'm going to skip the application of grit because here too I believe like in the other container I think we've been pretty generous on the grit here for a while now so I think we're just going to omit the addition of grit this go around. Working our way up here, we're gradually getting to the point where we're not going to be able to continue feeding this bin without making a huge mess in an attempt to open up a little hole to put the food in. So I've got to start thinking about where these little guys are going to get relocated to. Or I wonder if I should consider harvesting a container like this. I don't know the exact age of this bin, but it's somewhere in the two-month range. Hey Siri, how many days ago was May 23rd? It was 62 days ago. All right, well, 62 days in some cases amounts to two months. I think there are only two months, actually, in the year that have two 31-day months right next to each other. How does that go? January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. July, August. I believe those are the two months that are 31 and 31. But we're talking about May, June, July. So it's a little bit over two months at this point. Now that I'm looking here, I'm starting to see some cocoons. Or at least I saw one earlier. Or at least a moment ago. Yeah. No big deal. Sometimes I see them all over the place, other times I don't even see one. <laughs> I wonder why. I guess it doesn't help that I kind of stirred everything up here and probably buried any that may have been deposited on the top surface. So you can see how muddy this stuff is. It does not flake off. Not like in the Vermi bag mini where the European night crawlers are. When we fed that one, everything just flaked right off my fingers. No problem. Here we've got a little bit of a muddy mess, and this bin would definitely benefit from a little bit of evaporation action. So I'm not restoring the paper that was on it when we first started here. I'm just going to put this back up on the shelf the way it was, and then, uh, and then it too can benefit from a little bit of evaporation, and the fan is going to help with that too, hopefully. A lot of people have been saying that I should try that, so here I am trying it, keeping my fingers crossed. Hopefully it helps. <laughs> so... Before I go, 
and get to work on cleaning things up, which I won't bo bother you with. That's boring. I just wanted to say thank you. Thanks so much for keeping me company. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, then by all means, please remember to give me a quick thumbs up. It really means a lot, and I appreciate it. I also appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to the channel. There's that red subscribe button down there. If you hit it and also request that you be notified by ringing the bell, then you'll be notified of future videos. And I post a couple times a week usually, so there's always new stuff online. Also consider looking at some of my old stuff too. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day. Bye now.